Hey, it's good to see everybody again. Welcome back to the Conservation Coffee. We're going to today talk about one of the really important aspects of the Christmas and holiday season, which is transportation. So, uh, and there's actually some good news about this. But anyway, I'm excited to start the show off. Let's jump right in. Okay, everybody grab your coffee or your tea. All right, we're back. And today I'm having a beautiful matcha latte, uh, and it, it's incredible. Um, I, I make it with oat milk, and they're so tasty. So let me know what you guys are drinking down there. Um, what, what's your favorite way to start the day off? Is it coffee? Is it tea? <clears throat> if so, what kind of tea do you recommend? Uh, always trying to learn more and finding out what everybody likes to, to have in the morning. So thanks for joining. Uh, today we're going to talk about one of the aspects of the holidays that we tend to forget about, and it's sort of an invisible monster, and that is transportation. So transportation has obviously been a, a problem for quite a while in the sense of environmentalism. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of ships out on the sea, and all of them burn fossil fuel. So, you know, we always talk, talk about traffic jams and our roads and our, our cars and everything, but the real problem comes with what's happening out on the water. And there's so much poisoning of wildlife due to these old gas guzzling, literally gas guzzling machines. <coughs> so the good news is for today, um, the International Maritime Organization, and they run the entire world of shipping, they run the world of, of boats and all maritime law. So in 2008, they set a target of having its emissions, having its emissions by 2050. So they wanted to cut emissions down to half of where they are by 2050. So um, that, you know, they, they've been actually working on it uh, throughout all this time. So, uh, and they accomplished it, they intended to use ammonia as a fossil fuel alternative. Now, We'll talk about the fish in a second, but for the boats, ammonia makes a great alternative. It does not contain carbon, and although it is pungent smelling, <laughs> uh, it can burn within an engine and power it without emitting carbon dioxide. So that is, on one side, very good. Now, today, almost 90% of all goods traded globally are transported by the water. So imagine that. Everything that we buy goes through the water, and here's actually the shipping routes. Now... These ships are responsible for about 3% of the global CO2. Imagine that. Just these shipping routes. And these are the standard shipping routes um, that are used, shipping lanes, etc. So they emit approximately 1 billion tons of CO2 per year, NGHCs, per year, on average from 2007 to 2012 during the study that they did. Now they found that <clears throat> shipping is responsible for... 18 to 30 percent of all the world's nitrogen ox oxide pollution and nine percent of the global sulfur oxide pollution so ships are actually polluting the waterways and the airways in multiple forms that we don't think about uh, and a 70 percent of all ship emissions are within 400 kilometers of land so what that means is within 400 kilometers of land that's when the majority of their stuff happens. They're allowed to dump at sea a lot of them. Uh, their plastics in, within a certain distance from land. Um, they're supposed to only do it in in dock, but uh, that's another story. <laughs> that's another show. But for now, we can see that ships have a massive impact on our environment, and they're just something that's kind of left out of the conversation usually. You know, so um, we got to remember that because right now we are transporting so many goods with the holidays. Now, the idea of ammonia, it might sound good in, in solving one aspect of climate change, but it has another really bad side to it that I don't know if they fully thought all this out because these are the ammonia dangers and this is what's going to happen to the waters uh, and to the fish. So I don't know if it's, maybe it's a better alternative for cars than it is for ships. I don't know. But ammonia dangers, it has a slight fire hazard due to its narrow explosive limits. Um, if it enters 
receiving water, which could be, you know, ocean, river, anything, it's highly soluble and toxic to fish. So we could be looking at a lot more fish kills and toxicity into our waters by trying to save our air pollution. So, you know, it, it, this is getting very difficult because we're trying to change and get away from these fossil fuels, which I think everybody can kind of agree, you know, look, we don't, we don't have the same medical knowledge we had 100 years ago. We shouldn't be using the same energy knowledge. It just doesn't translate to where we are today. But our numbers are different. Our needs are different. And the problem is there are always ways that, that can be a little bit dangerous. So the ammonia may be a good idea, maybe not the best idea for ships. Um, but you know what was cool? This is where we come to today's positive eco news. This is a, the long and winding road to get there. But... This is a new ship called the Ocean Bird. Now, it's not really yet. These are just artist renditions, but it's actually in production. And it's supposed to be in full-scale production by late 2021 and delivered by 2024. This is a wind and solar-powered solution. Uh, now, Wellness Marine, a company responsible for the Ocean Bird, along with the Royal Institute of Technology, SSPA, and the Swedish Transportation Administration. And this will have zero emissions of any form. It won't contain any ammonias. And it's going to be one of the uh, most environmental ways that ships can be out on the water. And, you know, we're not talking about small ships and people that have their boats. We're talking about massive amounts of CO2 production, nitrous oxide production. There's a lot of these things going into the air. So we don't really think about it. We always think the ocean's nice and clean, but it's not. It's being destroyed constantly by fossil fuel. And although we still have to wait a little bit of time, it's pretty cool. So the ocean bird is on the way, and hopefully we will see solar and wind-powered boats in the near future. Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. I thought it was positive news. I hope you guys have a great day. I got to go make some more matcha latte. <laughs> I'll talk to you soon.